Good afternoon, everybody. It's David Schlothauer here in the Home Weather Office for Wednesday, November the 1st, 2023. In today's update, we are keeping an eye on some big weather pattern changes coming to the United States that you all need to be aware of because we're looking at more intense rainfall and flood concerns across the Pacific Northwest with warming up weather pattern for the Midwest and the Northern Plains. Now, before I do get talking about the United States weather forecast that you all clicked on this video for, I do have a couple announcements that I do want to share with you all. And one of these announcements is very important and very unfortunate uh, as far as my life goes. Well, not really my life, but the, the, the first one is that on Thursday last week at 10.05 in the morning, my grandpa has moved on into eternal life. He is no longer here. And so when my aunt came upstairs and told me that, unfortunately, David, your grandpa is not going to wake up anymore. And I just stop, stopped what I was doing. And I went downstairs and I literally saw him that he was dead. He was not alive anymore. And so I wanted to share with you all that um, with what all happened last week because I feel like that, you know, you guys are so important to me that I feel that I needed to share that with you all. That my grandpa is up in heaven where he is in no longer in pain or suffering anymore. And it is hard that he is not here on earth anymore where we can visit him every day. Last but not least, I do have a Sacramento Weather Center Facebook page that you all really need to check out. You all need to follow me here. I make really awesome graphics, a seven-day forecast, and I'm going to be working on more graphics for the Facebook page. So if you guys want to participate today, of course, create a Facebook um account it's completely free and then you could type up sacramento weather center or you can click on the link below this video to follow me today it is really awesome but just remember or just a reminder i do not cover any parts of the u.s in this facebook page and i only solely cover the central valley from Reading all the way down to turlock including for the Sierra Foothills and the Sierra Mountains, including Lake Tahoe and Truckee. Also, one quick thing, really quickly, I wanted to share with you all is I am getting over a cold, so I might sound a little congested, maybe a little bit nasally, but that's part of having a cold. And so I'm kind of on the backside of it, and so I will sound a little bit congested in today's video, but I'm not going to let a cold get in the way of my YouTube videos. And I've taken already a week off from uploading weather content. And I would really feel better if I kind of resumed my upload schedule as normal. At least as long as I feel good enough of doing it. So without further ado, let's get talking about what's ahead as far as the Euro goes. Let's look at the Euro. This is for this afternoon on the 1st of November, my birthday month, by the way. We're actually 14 days away until my birthday on the 15th of November. We'll see with what the weather is going to look like then. So we can see here this afternoon we have some showers some inclement weather as we do get that first atmospheric river as it moves into the Pacific Northwest that's going to eventually take aim into Northern California. Yes, we do need rain here, but otherwise much of the nation here is looking pretty quiet other than it is much colder than it should be for this time of the year. That atmospheric river spreads further inland across Oregon, Washington, Idaho, and Montana. We even got some snow for the higher elevations there over British Columbia, Manitoba, Canada. If you are in Northern California, we got the first signs of that moisture moving on shore, uh, bringing some light to moderate rainfall, but that system really breaks apart by Friday morning. By Saturday early morning on November the 4th here, if you're doing any traveling ahead of the Thanksgiving, I know some people like to take a few weeks off before Thanksgiving, and so if you're doing any uh, traveling northbound on I-5 going through, say, uh, Oregon and Washington, just keep that in mind going to get a lot of rainfall with that atmospheric river also some strong winds and high elevation snow we're not going to see any snow with this one over the cascades because this is going to be a warm system but what it will do is make the conditions quite wet for your traveling on i-5 and any on the interstates you're going across the pacific northwest 
Then that system kind of drops into the Northern Plains by the time we go into Sunday. So if you're doing any church um, festivities or if you're doing anything on Sunday, just keep that in mind. Maybe a little inclement there over, say, if you're in Wisconsin, if you're in Minnesota, might see some showers but the good news is no snow with this one. The snow is going to stay north of, say, the United States, or at least 98% of it. You're going to get a little bit of that in Quebec and Ontario, Canada, with another system hitting the west coast. And this one is going to be a little bit more juicier. Yes, we're going to get our rainfall that we really need on the sixth day of November. That's going to be good news for us. We're hoping we get a very wet winter, as my prediction is. I cannot, by the way, cannot wait to release my last winter forecast, and that is scheduled for November the 15th, actually maybe the 16th of November, and yeah, that's going to be great. I'm excited to share with you all on what my thoughts are uh, with this upcoming winter on is there going to be, um, is there changes that I made to the forecast? Well, you'll need to find that out when we get into mid-November. And then uh, we have another system that may brush the area by uh, next week on Wednesday. This is 162 hours out on the Euro. You can see a lot of green there. Maybe some very high elevation snow above 8,000 feet if you're going to Lake Tahoe. If you're going to the Sierras, they're like Bear Valley. Might get some snow there. But again, these systems are really warm, of course, to be expected by early November. And we hope to get a lot of snow for the mountainous terrain this winter. Your temperatures this afternoon are pretty mild. If you are across Denver, Colorado, it's in the low 60s. If you are in Texas, rather cool. And it's going to stay that way for a little while longer. But look at this in California. We're getting some temperatures in the low 80s. That's well above average for this time of the year. And it's going to stay that way for a while longer because we have a ridge of high pressure that I'll show you here that is actually going to be moving further east with time and that's going to allow temperatures tomorrow to warm up a little more so texas you're going to probably go back into the upper 50s to lower 60s while across the northern tier you're also going to warm up nicely Overnight temperatures are also still going to be on the chilly side, especially if you're in the Appalachians across the eastern half of the U.S. You're going to see temperatures there overnight into the upper 30s, possibly some upper 20s in the higher elevations, some of the wind sheltered areas. You could see some of the coldest temperatures. Also for the Rockies here, you could see some chilly overnight lows. But look at where much of the colder air is going to be residing away from the U.S., up there in near Hudson Bay, northern central Canada, where you're going to have overnight lows there in the single digits. California, you're going to have overnight lows that are also going to be warmer thanks to the, uh, the zonal flow of moisture, so not as cold as what we had in nights past. And then daytime highs for your Friday for November the 3rd, going to warm up nicely. And this is going to keep us going all the way into Saturday. Look at these temperatures, upper 70s for Texas, for Oklahoma, and for the Deep South. And that continues potentially all the way through Saturday and Sunday out to day four and day five. Really going to be warming up here, maybe even some upper 80s to lower 90s. Back in this warm weather stretch yet again for the first full week of November. Your temperature anomaly forecast, definitely a colder than average one across much of the Midwest here and the Deep South with temperatures 15 to 25 degrees below average. That's going to stay with you all for a while longer before warmer weather gets going by early next week. We're going to see a whole different pattern change here with temperatures anywhere between 5 to 15 degrees above average, and then eventually that's going to stay with you all, really changing the pattern. No more Arctic invasions, nothing super substantial other than other YouTubers might still think, oh, we're going to have a big Arctic invasion. They're probably going to be referring to this one across the Northeast, where you're going to have temperatures there about 5 to 10 degrees below average. Why is the weather pattern changing for this weekend in early next week, just in time for early? November. Well, let's take a look here at our air mass forecast. This is the 500 millibar uh, flow chart basically showing us what the air masses are doing. Usually bluer shading colors indicate lower heights, cooler temperatures, more polar air masses, whereas we have the orange and uh, yellow colors usually indicate more stronger ridging, which means warmer temperatures because we have air moving in from the south. So when we go forward in time, we can see that this trough, okay, we have this northwesterly flow that's helping to 
keep the cooler temperatures going. But see this ridge over here across the Pacific Northwest? It's actually going to be jumping eastward with time. And as that happens, guess what? Our colder polar air actually retreats to the north. Okay, and that's going to allow, again, more zonal flow, not much uh, troughing, no cold Arctic outbreaks. Nice warm-up is on the way because of this weather pattern. And in fact, we might see troughing build back west, which might help to amplify ridging across the Midwest. Very similar to with what we had last December and in January where we had a lot of Midwest ridging that really just kind of kept things really warm and dry for an extended period of time. By Tuesday, November 7th, uh, you can see again, still that pattern in place. Maybe some cooler temperatures because we get that northwesterly flow, but we got this ridge in the Midwest and we got allowing troughing that is gonna develop across the Pacific Northwest and keep us hopefully cooler than normal and bring us more shower chances. We need to take what we can get here, folks, because again, California really relies on no mid-november december january february february and march for its wet season even april at times we could use a lot of rainfall but really you all get rain in the summertime whereas here across the pacific northwest um if you are in california we don't get rain very much during the summer months so we really got to rely on the winter season for us to get that wet weather and then by Saturday, November the 11th, out to 10 days, looks like that ridge might still be in place for the Midwest. So what's the Climate Prediction Center predicting over the next 14 days? Well, here's a look at the 6 to 10 day outlook from the Climate Prediction Center with your temperature chances. Okay, this is showing us, are you going to see above average temperatures? What are the chances of that occurring, right? So you can see in the orange colors down here, there is a 50% chance that you could have temperatures above normal. And that seems to be pretty fitting uh, with our Euro model that shows, again, that warm-up that we've been talking about uh, in this video. We're going to see this pattern change. However, they still think there might be some cooler air Arctic um, shots early on in the period impacting, say, like the Great Lakes in the or in the Northeast, where there's a 40 to 50 percent chance that you could have below average uh, temperatures, but across much of the West, this is where it gets a lot better. We're not going to see as much of significant warming. We're actually going to get cooler weather here, where there is a 33 percent to equal chance of seeing those temperatures slightly above average or near average for this time of the year. Look at this across um alaska really going to be warm up there where there's a 50 to 60 percent chance for those temperatures to be an above average very similar very el nino like precipitation forecast for the next six to ten days you can see there's a 50 percent chance across the west and there's also a 40 percent chance of above average chances of rainfall or snow depending on the temperature wise uh, part of the video or part of the forecast uh especially over maine you might have more snow chances with this green that you see the 8 to 14 day forecast also represents warmer than average conditions across much of the midwest and the deep south so again the arctic air mass outbreak gone not going to come back anytime soon other than if you are in the northeast where you might have some more arctic air shots coming your way but look at this, much of the nation here going to see temperatures at or above average, of the exception of most of California, where we're going to see near average temperatures. Still going green in California, Ronald Martinez. You're probably watching this video and you're probably like, oh, that green, Hulk, 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 is the way we put it. We're looking at above average chances for precipitation for the West, so that's good. Also for the Deep South, but look at this for, say, New Orleans, for Jackson, Montgomery. Not going to see much in the way of above average chances. You really, really need some relief. In fact, the drought is so bad in Mississippi and Louisiana, is it's causing big concerns for water rationing issues. We're seeing extreme to exceptional drought all the way from Louisiana near Alexandria in Jackson, Starksville, extreme drought. That on top of high fire danger really going to exacerbate the problem here. Not the conditions, not going to get any better anytime soon. We're looking at moderate to high fire danger 
across the deep south for the next several days. And in fact, if that's not good enough, if we look at our drought monitoring forecast, this is now, this is Wednesday next week, it looks like it's only going to get worse and our moisture anomalies uh, or groundwater anomalies, very dry over here, almost three inches below normal. Okay, that is really, really, that is just mind-boggling ridiculous. And look at this, soil moisture amounts right around 1%. So you guys really, really, really need El Nino rains really bad. Because if you guys don't get it this year, it's going to be a whole hellhole for substantial amounts of uh, especially if, uh, conserving water, you're going to probably have to buy water at the store because of how dry it's been. Well, anyways, that's going to sum it up for today's video. Before you do click away from the video, please check out the Sacramento Weather Center Facebook page, okay? I really highly recommend following me there because I will have more updates on the West as far as are we going to get rain? I know I have a lot of locals like you, Raptor. You're a local up there in Chico. Follow me here on Facebook. Uh, we're already up to 26 followers, and hopefully this grows really successfully because, again, my job is keeping you all weather aware on a local basis from Redding, California, all the way down to Turlock, into the foothills of the Sierra, including Truckee and South Lake Tahoe, and far enough west to where you can get my updates if you're in Tracy, Fairfield, and even in Livermore. You don't want to miss my updates here on the Sacramento Weather Center Facebook page where I update at least every other day to every day. There will be a link in the description below this video leading to that Facebook page. And also, be sure you subscribe, share, and like this video if you did enjoy today's update. With that being said, I will be back with you more tomorrow with another detailed U.S. weather forecast.